Yo, 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 what up? It's your boy, Isaac Anzu, the lyrical, clerical, chimerical VTuber. He's an evolutionary revolutionary. <laughs> I don't know. Is that how you're supposed to do things? Um, I think so. Hello and welcome. Today, we are going to take our guy and do stuff with him in Blender because Unreal's been treating me real bad. And I, I can't. <clears throat> I can't. Hi, how are you? Not bad, not bad. Today's topic is ugh, my gut, my belly. I don't want it. I want abs. I want abs. Yes, so you get rid of cameras and lights that we needed for taking pictures of our guy. Uh, we can also get rid of the rough body, right? And the head rough. Isaac Abzu Arcor. <laughs> Abzu is a video game movement, though. All right. Uh, so if I have gotten rid of all the extra stuff and I export this as um, myguy.fbx, should work, right? Yeah. Isaac 3D Model when? Well, actually, I have someone much more talented than me working on it. Uh, beautiful red-haired tiefling. Not a tiefling, chimera. But I can understand the uh, understand the the comparison for sure. <laughs> okay. If I have but da but so now. Let's open up the scene that we want. Oh, God. Everything is awful. Why, why, why are you like this? Stop, stop. 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 Chimera, more like Gymera. <laughs> Got him. Anyway, this scene might look familiar. You may recognize it as the, the background of this very uh, library. And we are going to try a thing. Can I? No, 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 no. Import FBX. My guy. <gasps> there he is. And he's just a single object. Incredible. So let's let's do some testing real quick. Grab Move him forward. Well, he is smaller than this uh, space, isn't he? He is. Scale him up. Uh, you know what? What we can do, and I'm so bad at moving the 3D cursor. Uh, we can move the 3D cursor down here. Right? Maybe a little up.
set it set it right there. Why is it why does it do that? I, I mean that's fine. That's fine. So let's move this guy over. Over and down and back. So we're on the 3D cursor, and now we can set the 3D cursor as our transform pivot point and scale him up appropriately. Look at that. And now he is complete. Um, let's go back to the world origin, please. Okay. Wunderbar. Look at this guy. Uh huh. Except, did the scaling fuck with the skeleton? I guess let's find out. Go to pose mode. Oh, wait. Uh, Scoozy, why is my uh, armature not working? Mm -hmm. All right, let's read. Let's read about this stuff. Uh, armature. The bones are completely messed up. FBX import armature problem. What the heck? So we know that, for example, yeah, that's not. Uh huh. Yeah. See, none of my none of my parenting is happening. None of my constraints are happening. What the heck? What the heck? Into object mode again. In front, please.
Okay. Go back to pose mode. Wait, that one's working. Why is that one working? Oh God, they're working, but they're just not, none of them are parented to. Oh, some of them are. Huh? What, what, what? Well, definitely none of my bone constraints made it. Under import, rig FDF constraints. Incorrect rotation and size, yes. Okay, let's try this. Um, sorry, guy skeleton, I need you to delete. Uh, delete. All right, file, import. FBX, armature, ignore leaf bones, automatic bone orientation, import user properties. We have that somewhere. Force connect to children. Import. Okay. Still, 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 IKs don't work. And my, and my, my, my bones don't quite work. Okay. Thank you for your service. Maybe we need to export differently. Let's open my guy again. Good, 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 good. And let's say export armature. Add leaf bones. Why? We do have non-deforming bones. We need that. Um, what does it say? Primary bone. Okay, that's fine. Geometry. Da, 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 da. Okay. Well, it's worth it to do this again just because we add. Why would we add leaf bones? I don't know. Back to the library. And now we import FBX, my guy, armature. Oh, wait, why? Hit export again. Import my guy, ignore leaf bones, automatic bone orientation. Let's try not. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. Now he's now he's looking a little bit more. Oh my goodness. The bones are so large. Not what I wanted to do. In deposed mode with you. All right, it's doing it. Um, what are these humongous bones, though? Yeah, but it's not moving the jaw like we want it to. So I think maybe I think I have an idea. What if? Now, hold out, hold out on me. What if instead of trying to take our guy out of the scene, we took our scene to the guy? This has no armature. Library.fbx. Cool. Open recent, my guy. And now here in my guy, look, watch, watch the magic. Select the armature, go to pose mode. You get things like this. The eyes working properly. The mouth. Uh, working properly. Blah, 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 blah. Whoa. The constraints. Working properly. Fantastic. Okay, we have our guy. Go back to object mode, save. Let's import an FBX of the library. Oh, ho, ho, dear reader. Is this exactly what we wanted? Oh my God, look at all the fucking... Unlabeled cubes and spheres. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't bring in my material properties, so I think we have to redo it. And also, let's just, like, move the 3D cursor, like, here? How do you move the 3D cursor? Perfect. Okay. Let's go back to the library. This is all part of the process. So now we need to export Maybe we export as OBJ. Let's see. Here Firefox. Export Blender scene with materials.
Change the path mode. Oh yeah, it's probably go from auto to copy. Put the textures embed icon into it. You need to bake complex textures because they will never be saved in any. Okay, that makes sense. I do have a complex texture here, it's the books. So baking textures. I like step-by-step -step guide, texture baking. Procedural materials. We do have a procedure material actually in this scene. The color of the books is procedural. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's select everything. Go to edit mode, UV, smart UV project. Okay. Is that it? I guess so. It looks kind of like what this is doing. Oh God, I have no idea. So create uh, another UV map called, um, bake. And why is it so complicated? Oh boy. In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to do texture baking for beginners. So there are many reasons why you might want to bake your material to texture maps in Blender. You might want to import your 3D model with your material into a game engine, or you also might want to use it in a different 3D software. Or you also might want to upload your 3D model with the material to Sketchfab. Or your material may not work in a different rendering engine, like maybe you've created a material in Cycles Render, but then you want to switch it over to Blender Eevee and have the same look. Or maybe your material is just very complex and you want to bake the textures so that the performance is better. So there are many reasons why you might want to bake your materials out to texture maps in Blender. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. Now probably the main reason why you'd want to bake your material out to texture maps is because you want to use it in a different 3D program or a game engine or sketch fab. 
Isaac, do you do advice streams? Um, I did in the I did once. Uh, there's a website called Tell on Him. I'm horribly behind on my tell on ums. Uh, but it's a place to ask anonymous questions. And uh, I like it. It's cool. Um, but generally, every stream is an advice. But you may stream. be using some amount of procedural <laughs> materials. Advice. Like for this material here, I am using a procedural Musgrave texture and also a procedural noise texture. And these are procedural textures in Blender shader nodes. But because they're procedural, they only work in Blender. And so if you want to use this material in a game engine or a 3D software or another program, the procedural materials won't carry over to that other program. So you have to bake out the material to texture maps and then you can use it in a different software. So that is a common reason why you'd want to bake out your textures to texture maps. And this material here is a procedural dirty metal material, and I have a tutorial on how to create this procedural dirty metal material, so if you'd like to check that out I will have the links in the description. And I'm going to be using this material as an example for the tutorial. So and this really procedural material is also material? available for purchase on my Gumroad store, and you can also get access to it on my colors. Patreon page. And speaking of my Gumroad store and Patreon page, Page. Tutorials like these are made possible thanks to my Gumroad customers and my Patreon supporters and my members on the YouTube memberships. So if you'd like to oh, help no, support me and this channel, I will have links in the description well. to my Gumroad and my Patreon and the YouTube memberships. Those are all really great ways to help support me and this channel. And if you find this video helpful and you'd like to give me a little tip, you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube. And I do appreciate your support. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to bake the four most common texture maps. And those are the color map, the metallic map, the roughness map, and the normal map. Now the color map, the roughness map, and the normal map are the most common ones, but I did also want to cover how to bake metallic maps because metallic maps are a pretty common material because you're going to use metallic maps for any material which is made out of metal. And when you're baking metallic maps, you do need to use a specific workflow because there are some common problems which can come up when baking metallic maps. And so in this video, I will show you how to properly bake metallic maps. And of course, if your material isn't using all of these maps, then you don't have to bake all of them. So if your object isn't made out of metal and you aren't using any metallic values, then you won't need to bake a metallic map. Or maybe you're just trying to bake a really simple material and the material is only using a color value, then in that case you could just bake the color map. And also after this tutorial, so if you'd like to learn really more about texture baking and learn how to bake some more maps, like for instance materials. displacement maps and emission maps and some other different maps, baking textures from one UV map to a different UV map, or baking multiple materials to a single texture map, if you'd like to learn any of those things, then you can check out my Blender texture baking tutorial playlist after you watch this video. All right, so the first step to texture baking is we need to create an image to bake to. So I am in the shading tab right here and so I have the 3d space here so I can preview the material and I'm in the rendered view and then right over here on this side I have the shader editor so in the shader editor I'm going to press shift a let's go here to the search and I'm gonna search for an image texture and let's drop shift a image texture the image texture right here just above the principled shader. So we need to create an image that we can bake the textures to. So I'm going to click on the new button right here and then on the name I can just rename this to dirty metal. Now the width and height here is going to change the resolution of the texture and on default it is 1024 by 1024 and that is the standard resolution for a 1k texture. For this material I want to bake a 4k texture so what I'm going to do is click and then drag down and then let go and this way I can change both values at the same time. And I'm going to type in 4096. So 4096 by 4096 is the standard resolution for a 4K texture. 
texture. But you can of course change this to whatever okay. you want, whether you want to do like an 8K texture, texture or just like a 6K texture or a 4K or, or even just like a 2K texture. You can just change this fine. to whatever resolution you want to bake the textures to. Now for the color here, we can just leave this to fully black because the baking is going to bake over the image. And then I can just click on the OK button. So we have now created an image that we can bake to. Now we need to tell Blender how the 3D object is going to be placed on the 2D texture. And so to do this, we need to UV unwrap the object if it hasn't already been UV unwrapped. Now to do this, you could go over to the UV editing workspace, but I'm instead just going to click right up here when the crosshair appears and I can click and drag down and that's going to split the window. And then if I click right here to change the editor type, I can change this to the UV editor. And then I want to load in this image that we've added. So if you click right here on the drop down, you can just add the dirty metal. So this is the blank black image that we've created. And in the 3D space, if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see that the default Suzanne head has has already been UV unwrapped. So if your object object already has a nice UV unwrap, you can just leave it how it is, but your object may not be UV unwrapped, so I'm going to show you how to do a basic UV unwrap for texture baking. So just press the tab key to go into edit mode, and press the A key to make sure all of the vertices are selected. I'm now going to press the U button, and then I'm just going to use the smart UV project, that'll work fine for texture baking. So I'm going to click on... Oh boy. Oh, Almighty Sir Isaac, Master Dragger of UV Editor, Expert Drop Down Menu Handler, Scholar of UV Wrapping. I don't think any of those are true, but uh, hello, Dolu. It's so good to see you. Why would you say this? Take two. Now we need to tell Blender. <laughs> how the 3D object is going to be placed the on the 2D texture. And so to do this, we that need to sure. UV unwrap the object if it hasn't already been UV unwrapped. Now to do this, you could go over to the UV editing workspace, but I'm instead just going to click right up here when the crosshair appears, and I can click. Oh shit, that's nice. Can I get the UV editor here? We can bring back our outliner here. Go to books colors. Yes. And drag down uh, and that's going to split the window. You, and then if I click right here to change the editor type, I can change this to the UV editor. And then I want to load in this image. We need all the books selected. Select objects. Every book. Every book. Selected. That we've added. So if you click right here on the drop down, you can just add the dirty metal. So this is the blank black image that we've created. And in the 3D space, if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see that the default Suzanne head has already been UV unwrapped. So if your object already has a nice UV unwrap, you can just leave it how it is. But your object may not be UV unwrapped. So I'm going to show you how to do a basic UV unwrap for texture baking. So, so just press the, the tab key to go into edit mode and press there. the A key to make sure all of the vertices are selected. I'm now going to Select. press the U button and Literally then I'm just going to use the smart UV project. That'll work fine for texture baking. So I'm going to click on the smart UV project and then we do need a little bit of space in between the islands. So on the island margin right here, I'm going to turn this to a 0 0.002. So 0 0 0.002 and then click on OK. And so by using the Smart UV Project, Blender is going to do the best job that it can to UV unwrap the object. Nice. And to preview this in full screen, I can hover my mouse over the UV editor and then I can press Control Spacebar. That's going to go into full screen. So here is the UV editing of the object. Now if you zoom in here, if you zoom in closely, you can see there is some space in between all of the different UVI. That's good. Done for today. I was working on a giant music box in Minecraft and it was lovely. You're halfway done. Dang. Halfway done. A giant music box?
using the music note blocks. The real question is, how do you like load in different songs? <laughs> or is it just the one song? Islands. And so we definitely want some space because if the UV islands are overlapping, then there will be problems when we do the texture baking and it won't look correct. So that is why I turned up the island margin to just a small amount, just to make sure all the islands do have a bit of space in between them and there's no overlapping. And this is just a quick and simple UV unwrap, but if you'd like to learn more about UV unwrapping in Blender, then you can check mm -hmm. out my UV unwrapping for beginners tutorial. I'll have a link to that in the description. Now I do just want to nice. double check that there isn't any overlapping. So I'm going to press the A key to deselect all the UV editing, and then I can click on select, and I'm going to click on select overlap. And you can see there are a few things which are overlapping, so we can fix these, and this is a- All right. A key. Select overlap. Nothing actually really easy to fix. So what I'm going to do is click right up here, and this is going to go to the face select mode. You can also just click on the three button on the top of your keyboard. And then I'm just going to zoom in here, and I can just select this face, and I just want to move this face out into a free area. So I'm going to press the V key, and the V key is going to rip the faces, and so it's going to separate it into its own island. And then I can click to place it there, and if you want to move it again, you can press the G key, and then move this around, and then just place it. It. So I can now press the A key to deselect everything, and then I can click on select, and I'm going to click say. on select overlap again. So I can just zoom in here and select this face, and I can press the V key, that'll rip the faces so it's its own island, and I can just stick it somewhere here in kind of a free area. And if you just have a few UV islands, you can also scale the UV islands up, so if the UV islands are bigger, then they're going to be able to use more of the texture space. And so if you can, you can scale some of the UV islands up so it actually has more pixels and that way man i love video tutorials i'm such a visual person uh if there if this experiment fails fails well it's not worth using for me i mean isn't that that's that's the, so the truth in any any regard. Oh, we do have crazy overlap. What? Give me a second. Yeah, select overlap. Why are these like this? Select all. Smart UV project. There we fucking go. Okay, now. Looks like we might still have some overlap down here. No, we don't. Oh no, we don't. Oh hell yeah. We've got we've got some some close ones, but no overlaps. Incredible. Yeah, that's that's the truth. I was talking about this with a friend yesterday. It's like I found a bunch of things in my life. Cool things, right? Things that work well for me mentally. Like, uh, we were talking about food and the idea of a cheat day. Like, one day a week, you eat whatever you want, and then the rest of the week, you eat healthily. Um, cheat day ended up being, like, really, really vital to me uh, mentally because it gave me something to look forward to. It allowed me to kind of regulate my my eating habits for the rest of the week um however didn't work for me physically and maybe it's because like i wasn't working out enough maybe it's because you know my body was responding too heavily to the cheat days as opposed to the the on days but it's okay it didn't work for me
maybe I'll try it again in the future when my my body is different and my mind is different and see if it works still. But uh, for now, it's like, you know, it doesn't matter. There are more methods to try. My strat right now, post three day things in a day and make a thread before the experiment ends on Wednesday. Pretty nice. Be posting my shorts, show my YouTube shenanigans, a regular update to tweet or opinion tweet, and share my art. So pretty good, pretty good strat. I need to get, I was just talking about tell on them, uh, which is my like anonymous question asking website uh, friend. Um, cheat day, it's where you bend the rules a bit. Yeah, by a bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> Cheat day is the one day a week where your diet doesn't count. You go super hard on your diet six days a week. And then on your cheat day, you forget the diet and you eat what you like. And honestly, it's really good for if you're doing like a super low carb uh, diet. Because you do need to like refresh your carbohydrates, right? Carbohydrates, your body does need them, despite uh, the fact that it's not always great for your body. <laughs> Seven days a week, what ass meat? Can't pull me out of that one. The Certified final texture freak. maps will be higher quality because they're using more of the pixels. And then once again, select and select overlap. And there's just one more here. So just select this face. I can press the V key to rip the faces, bring it over here, and I could also scale it up a bit. All right, so I can click on the back to previous, or I can press control spacebar to minimize that. So we now have a decent UV unwrap for the texture baking. And again, if you'd like to learn the basics of UV unwrapping in Blender, then definitely check out my UV unwrapping for beginners That's tutorial. Cool. Now it may be that you also have some image textures in your material, and those image textures might be using the UV editing of the object. In this case, I am just using these procedural textures, and these procedural textures are using the object coordinates, so they're not actually using the UV mapping. But you may have some image textures. My strat back then was pretty engaging, and that is commenting on people's shit and stuff. The reply and feedback is a high demand after all. Yeah, that's that's kind of been my strat lately. I I try to, at least on Blue Sky, I try to like like everyone's stuff and then reply on a few things a day. And it seems to be working, it seems to be like building uh relationships, right? That's the goal. I'm not too worried about like notification numbers or do people like my stuff. But I think the problem is that I'm I'm not really posting a whole lot myself, you know. Try to do once a day. But it'd be tough. You're picky when you like and interact with stuff. Well, the thing is, like on Twitter. Liking something increases its spot in the algorithm, right? And it, it tells Twitter, hey, this person likes this sort of thing. Go find more of it and show them more of it. More, more, more. Blue Sky doesn't have an algorithm. So when you like something, it pretty much does nothing except just notify the person that you like their post, you saw their post. So I'm pretty, pretty liberal with likes on Blue Sky, but... Yeah, on Twitter, very much the opposite. Why do I, why am I opening? Why am I opening this? We're, we're doing tutorials. Textures in your material, and those tutorial. image textures might be placed on the object using the UV editing. And so if your material does have some texture maps, and you re-UV unwrap the object, then it might mess up the placement of those textures. And so if that's happening for your object, then you should check out my video on how to bake textures from one UV map to a different <laughs> UV map. All right, so I'm Let's going see. to press the tab key to go back to object mode, and we can now go over the bake settings. So I'm going to click right up here to go to the render properties. Now, right here on the render engine, it is important that you use the cycles rendering engine because the EV rendering engine does. One day one is at, I'm unsatisfied, but his experiment must not end until the time of the result has been made. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to see results after just one day. Um, they were talking about that with. Uh, um, 
working out as well, like give yourself a few weeks. <laughs> don't don't try to like measure your weight loss or gain after just a couple days. Use the average. Hmm. Use the average after a few weeks, right? doesn't actually set, support baking so if your blender file good. is in eevee you can totally use eevee after you've baked the textures but first you need to change the render engine over to cycles and then do the baking and then once you're done with the baking you can change it back to blender eevee now if you open up the sampling tab right here you can go to the render samples and i like to use a render samples of just 10 because if you use less samples then it's actually going to bake faster but i found that just turning the samples to 10 won't affect the quality of all the texture bake will still look fine but the textures will bake much faster if the samples are turned down so i just use a sample count of 10. now on the device here i have a gpu in my computer and my gpu renders a lot faster than my cpu so if i use gpu it's also going to bake faster so the baking will work with both your cpu or your gpu if you have a gpu so you can just use whichever one you would normally render your images with so if you are in the cycles rendering engine you can scroll right down here and you will see that's fair but damn the feelings don't get old yeah human brains are wired to uh respond to those sort of hmm hmm tiny tiny changes right and uh like it's the immediate changes the immediate changes that your brain is like ah yes i am going to respond to this because i can see the connection between here and the problem but you ask you ask your brain to like okay let's let's do this for a week and wait and see how we feel after after a week uh, and your brain is like no i hate it now i hate it today why are we still zooming that there is a baking tab and i'm actually just going to click and then drag up and just drop it right up here so that it's higher up and then i can click on this to open it up so the first texture that i'm going to bake is the metallic map and i especially want to cover the metallic map in this video because a lot of people can have problems with baking the metallic material so in blender if you try to bake any textures with a metallic value when you bake the textures the texture is going to be fully black mm -hmm. and it's not going to bake correctly and so if you are baking a material which consists of metal you need to make sure the metallic value is turned all the way down to zero then you can bake all the textures and then once the texture baking is finished you can turn the metallic value back up to one or if you have a texture which is plugged into the metallic value you need to make sure that is unplugged and make sure the metallic value is turned to zero now back over here to the bake settings if you click on the bake type you can see that there are different options to bake to so there's the diffuse one and this one is used to bake the color color maps, there's also roughness, and there's also normal, but there isn't actually any metallic value to bake to. So to bake the metallic map, I'm going to use the emission. So you can click on the emit, and that is short for the emission. Now to continue, I am going to be using Blender's built-in Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the add-on enabled, you can just click on edit, and then you can go to the preferences, and then over there in the add-ons tab, you can search for a Node Wrangler, and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. So the add-on is built in a Blender, and I will show you how to use it in the video. So now that the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled, you can control shift and select different nodes, and that is going to add a viewer node, and it's going to preview the node on the object. Now, if you click right here on the arrow to open up the viewer node, you can see that the viewer node is actually an emission shader. So if we click on the bake button with the bake type set to emission, it's actually going to bake whatever the viewer node is previewing. So I can control shift and select this color ramp, and this color ramp here was going into the metallic value. So this texture here is telling it where it's going to be metallic and where it's not Ooh, going to be metallic. So again, just make sure you turn the metallic value all the way to zero on the principled shader, and then make sure you control shift and select the texture, which is going into the metallic value. Now it may be that you're material. Okay, before we get too far in this, we do have another texture to bake. So let's go into object node. This is a metallic texture, the glass texture. And if I recall,
Yeah, this has the glass texture as well. Okay, so uh, under the glass texture, search for image texture, new thing. Glass. We don't need a big texture for this one. So now in the UV editor, select our glass panes, go down to the glass. Make sure everything that uses the glass is selected. And I believe those are the only two things that use the glass. Yes. Okay. Uh, go to edit mode. Smart UV project. Yes. Okay. So now we have our two big glass panes. And then we have we have our, our other thing. It looks like it's using a different thing for each thing. Object mode, select all, go in here, hit tab. Oh god. Select just uh you and you. Go in here, hit tab. And then we have some overlap, don't we? Yes, we do. So face select. Uh, select this face. It rip failed. I guess you don't need to rip it because it's its own thing. Let's scale it down and move it over to this lovely Empty space. Okay. Back. To, so now our glass texture has a picture that works. Baking the metallic material. So, let's so bake in Blender, material. if you try to bake any textures with a metallic value, when you bake the textures, the texture is going to be fully black, and it's not going to bake correctly. And so if you are baking a material which consists of metal, you need to make sure the metallic value is turned all the way down to zero. Then you can bake all the textures, and then once the texture baking is finished, you can turn the metallic value back up to one. Or if you have a texture which is plugged into the metallic value, you need to make sure that is unplugged and make sure the metallic value is turned to zero. Now back over here to the bake settings, if you click on the bake type, you can see that there are different options to bake to. So there's the diffuse one, and this one is used to bake the color maps. There's also roughness, and there's also normal, but there isn't actually any metallic value to bake to. So to bake the metallic map, I'm going to use the emission. So you can click on the emit, and that is short for the emission. Now to continue, I am going to be using Blender's built-in Node Wrangler add-on, so if you don't have the add-on enabled, you can just click on Edit, and then you can go to the Preferences, and then over there in the okay, Add-ons tab, you can on. search for a Node Wrangler, and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. So the add-on is built in a Blender, and I will show you how to use it in the video. So now that the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled, you can Control Shift and select different nodes, and that is going to add a viewer node, and it's going to preview the node on the object. Now, if you click right Right here on the arrow to open up the viewer node, you can see that the control shift select. We just want to add a viewer, right? viewer node is actually an emission shader. So if but I don't have a viewer node.
we click on the bake button with the bake type set to emission, it's actually going to bake whatever the viewer node is previewing. So I can oh. control shift and select this color ramp and this color ramp here was going into the metallic value. So this texture here is telling it where it's going to be metallic and where it's not going to be metallic. So again, just make sure you turn the metallic value all the way to zero on the principled shader and then make sure you control shift and select the texture which is going into the metallic value. Now it may be that your material isn't using a texture in the metallic value, uh -huh. you might instead just be using a metallic value. And so if you're just using a single value, then instead of baking to a texture, we just want to bake to a color. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to go here to the search, and I'm going to search for RGB, and we're just going to add the RGB node. And then real quick, I'm just going to control Shift and select the principled shader again. And what I can do is I can plug the color into the metallic value. So now if you look at the material, if I turn the RGB all the way up to fully white, it is now a fully metallic material. But if I turn the RGB all the way to black, it's not going to be metallic at all. So if you have a material which is fully metal, you just want to turn the RGB all the way up to fully white, and then I just want to unplug the metallic value, so this metallic value... Oh shit. Um... There was another glass thing. This glass pane at the edge here. Uh, edit mode. Okay, yes, we have to, we have to, we have to move this one too. Uh, okay, back to object mode. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You like the music? For those of you on the VOD, you can't hear it, but it's the Brandenburg Concertos by Bach. There we go. Value is set to zero and then you can control shift and select the RGB node and that way the viewer node is going to preview a fully white color. In my case though I am using this color ramp so I'm going to control shift and select the color ramp. All right, so there's just a few more things before we actually hit the bake button. Right here on the viewer node you need to make sure that the strength is set to one because if the strength Go back, go back, go back. To fully white, it is now a fully metallic material. But if I turn the RGB all the way to black, it's not going to be metallic at all. So if you have a material which is fully metal, you just want to turn the RGB all the way up to fully white, and then I just want to unplug the metallic value, so this metallic value is set to zero. And then you can control shift and select the RGB node, and that way the viewer node is going to preview a fully white color. In my case though, I am using this color ramp, so I'm going to control shift and select the color ramp. All right, so there's just a few more things before we actually hit the bake button. Right here on the viewer node, you need to make sure that the strength is set to one, because if the strength value is turned up higher than one or lower than one, that's actually changing the value. So just make sure the strength is turned to one on. Okay. Let's add an emission shader. the viewer node, but it should be set to a strength of 1 on default. Now the next thing that I need to do is turn the image texture's color space to a non-color. So right here on the color space, make sure you turn this to non-color. And you want to... The image texture's color space from sRGB to non-color. Okay do this before you bake the textures for any textures which aren't contributing to the base color. So for the color map you're not going to do this, but for all of the other textures you want to set this to a non-color. 
because if you don't set this to non-color, if you just leave it at the default of sRGB, then it's not going to bake the correct values, and so your final texture bake will look a bit different. And then the other thing you need to do is make sure the correct object is selected, and that way Blender will know what object it needs to bake. And then also here in the shader editor, you just need to make sure that the image texture is selected, and this way Blender will know what texture it's going to bake to. And then before I click on the bake button, I'm going to press Control S, and that'll save the Blender file, just in case for some reason if Blender crashes, we won't lose our progress. And then I can click on the bake button. And so right down here, you can see that there is a progress bar, and how long it takes to bake will depend on the power of your computer. All right, and the baking is finished. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode, and then I'm going to press control space bar with my mouse. It's working. It looks like it worked, because now my... Uh... My image map changed. Yeah. Looking, looking good, looking good hovered in the UV editor so I can see this in full screen. So you can see that blend has baked the metallic values to the UV editing. And if I zoom in closely, you can really see the importance of having that space in between the islands. Because if the islands were overlapping, then it would texture bake over the island, and so then there would be some problems and the bake wouldn't look correct. And you can also see that when it bakes, it gives a little space here in between the bake and the island. So that is important that you have some space there between the islands. So I'm just going to press control space bar again. Now, if this island margin spacing is too big and you want to make it smaller, you can change that. So right over here on the bake settings, if you open up the margin, the default size right here is set to 16 pixels. And so most mm -hmm. of the time, I just leave this at the default. But if for some reason you want to make the margin smaller, you could turn this down so for instance I could just turn the margin size down to like an 8 and then again make sure the object is selected make sure that the image is selected and then I can click on bake again and it finished and if I press the tab key to go into edit mode you can now see that, that island margin is much smaller so an island margin of 8 is fine so I'll just leave that to 8 all right, so we now just need to save this image to our computer, because if we don't save this as an image file to our computer, then when we close Blender, Blender's not going to save the image data. So to save this to our computer, let's click on Image, and then I can click on Save As. And then I'm just going to save this in a folder on my computer, and I'm going to rename this to Dirty Metal Metallic because this is the metallic texture, so I'm gonna make sure to put the metallic at the end of the name there. And then if you want to, you can leave it as a PNG image, but I wanna make the file size a bit smaller, so on the file format here, I can just change this to JPEG, and then I'll just turn the quality to 100. And then I can click on Save as Image. So that is how you bake the metallic map. All right, so the next map is the color map. Now So now we have a glass image. Is that right? So we're not using the, I mean, it still looks right. Okay, let's try baking the color map. For the color map, I don't want to use the viewer node, so I'm just going to control shift and select the principled shader just to preview the principled shader again. Okay. Let's go back to object mode. Select all the books. Uh huh. As well as these books. Let's look at the books colors page. Got all our book covers. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if the metallic value is turned up or if anything's plugged into the metallic value, then when you try to bake the textures, it's going to look fully black and it's not going to bake properly. So while we're baking the other textures, we need to keep the metallic value turned to zero. But then once we're done texture baking, we can turn the metallic value back up or you can, of course, plug in the metallic texture. Now, if you go right over here to the bake type, I want to bake the color map. So I'm going to change the bake type to diffuse. And so the diffuse 
use is going to bake whatever is going into the base color of the principal shader. So if I control shift and select this color ramp, this is the color map and so this is what it's going to bake. So I can control shift and select the principal shader. Now and color of the principal to diffuse. And so the diffuse is going to bake whatever is going into the base color of the principal shader. So if I control shift and select this color ramp, this is the color map and so this is what it's going to bake. So I can control shift and select the principal shader. Now because this is the color map, this image is going to be going directly into the base color. So on the color space here, I want to change this back to the default which is sRGB. Now if we go right back over here to the bake settings, there is this influence tab right here. And if I open this up, you can see there is direct, indirect, and color. Now, if we leave the direct and indirect on, it's actually going to bake the lighting data as well. And in this case, we don't want it to bake the lighting data. We just want it to bake the color because okay, we are going okay. to use the lighting in the 3D scene to actually light the object. So on the contributions right here, we want to turn off the direct and indirect. We just want it to bake the color map. And then again, before you hit the bake button, make sure that the correct object is selected and make sure that the correct image texture is selected. And we're going to use the same image texture, so we are going to bake over this image texture, but then we'll save it to our computer as a different image texture. So make sure the object is selected, make sure the image is selected. This is set to diffuse here on the bake type, so I can just click on bake again. And it didn't take very long, and it is finished. So here we all right, now this one might take a while because essentially there are oh, like 130 books. Yeah, look at it. It's slowly baking all the different book colors. <gasps> ah, that's actually cool. Oh my goodness. <sighs> should we do should we do some advice advice stream? What do you got for me telling him? Why are you so, it's so light mode. Is there a, a dark mode? Some features are only available in the app. Sad. I do have the app. All right. Do you have a favorite color? Favorite color is green. Why did the music stop? Bruh. Oh, because I didn't put it on repeat. Okay. Again. My favorite color is green. I chose it randomly. When I was but a wee lad. Based on the color of my favorite shirt. Yeah. How do you make people feel comfortable around you? This feels like a personal question. Uh, how do you make people feel comfortable around you? Um, Every person comes to a conversation or interaction with different expectations and emotions. It's true. I'll say double hit D there. Double D. And emotions. to make someone feel comfortable, you have to meet their expectations and accept their emotions. It's tough. It's tough to know what someone else is feeling when you 
person them. But if you practice empathy and are a good listener, it gets easier. There's no right answer, and every situation requires its own approach. You got a nickname? Uh, do I have a nickname? Um, so many. I'm the boss. Zoo. The man. Zoo. I'm the goat. Uh, excuse me. Um, would it be weird if I call you Sack as your nickname? <laughs> Sack. The Sack. I mean, just make sure there's two A's in it, right? Because there's two A's in my name. I'm covered in my favorite colors, AKA purple. I couldn't tell. There was no way to tell. But I'm pretty amenable to nicknames. If you want to call me some something, just make sure I know you're talking to me. That's the minimum requirement. <laughs> Sorry if I kept switching from Isaac or Isaac. Yeah, it it happens. Look at this, look at this amazing UV map we've got. If you could add a silly new rule to your favorite sport, what would it be? Um I would say I want hockey players to have to give each other a little kiss on the cheek after they fight in order to properly make up. There you go. Just a little kiss on the cheek. If you're willing to punch someone you should be willing to kiss them on the cheek. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I want to give people who lost limbs a free prosthetic. Of course. That's how it should be. Why are we discounting your mobility in society just because of an accident you had? Stop it. All right. Texture baking is done, and my god, this beautiful texture map. Beautiful. Um, so I think 16 pixels was too big, actually. So I think we need to drop this down to maybe like two pixels and do another bake. Yeah, that looks better. All right, more telling him. 
You're stuck in a zombie apocalypse. Which two famous people living or dead do you want to team up with to survive? And why? Um, I want... Let's see. You got to have a survival expert, right? Jack Black? What does Jack Black bring to the table, really? Like, I'm going to go with Bear, Bear Grylls. And uh, so we have a survival expert. Excellent. Good. Love a, survival, love a survival expert. But who else? Who else do we, who else do we bring on our journey? Come on, it's Jack Black. He can do almost everything. He can be funny. Ugh. No way. No way. And also he's a he's a big guy. Like we gotta feed we gotta feed a big guy. Let's say bear grills and we have a survival expert. We need a fighter. We need a combat expert. But preferably a gun. Uh, uh, the, okay, so so let's talk about like weapons in a zombie apocalypse. Guns are not a good option because bullets are limited. Um, hand to hand combat. Also, not a great option because you're putting yourself in grapple range of the zombies. So really, we want somebody who's like good with swords, spears. Spears are the best weapons ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, spears have their time and place. But spears are great when you're facing someone who is trying not to get stabbed, right? Zombies do not care about getting stabbed. If you stab a zombie, it will just keep walking towards you, except now your spear is stuck inside the zombie, right? You need a slashing weapon. Who's like an insane sword master? Famous person, insane sword master. My friends say I look like Jack Black in a school of rock days. <laughs> my wife, uh, my wife also says I look like Jack Black, and she says that's very attractive. You can barbecue skewer all of them. Become the Vlad the Impaler you've always wanted to be. I want to survive. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Famous person. Famous sword master. I guess, uh, what's his name? Um, Muramasa. Muramasa was the swordsmith. Steven Seagal? No. Listen, any actor? Probably not, uh, probably not actually good at combat or survival skills because they're actors. Why don't people understand that? They're actors. Uh, Japanese Swordmaster. Musa, Musa, Musashi Miyamoto. Is that the guy? Yeah, let's say Musashi Miyamoto. The girls and Musashi Miyamoto. If Christopher Lee was still alive, he might have kicked ass. Okay, I take I take back what I just said. Christopher Lee is the exception. Christopher Lee is the actor who could actually uh like destroy you in seven different ways. <laughs> seven hundred different ways. Christopher Lee will will take you apart. Christopher Lee will sting death metal while he uh surgically destroys you. That's 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 the real. 
That's the real talent there. Bear Girls and Masashi Miyamoto. We got a guy for survival. And we got a sword guy. Guns and fists are too limited in terms of fighting. Angry zombies. In my opinion. How about Terry Crews? Okay, listen. Terry Crews can stand in for all of the uh bodybuilders and let me just say bodybuilders require intense diet and training in order to be strong right and even then they build their muscles for size and not strength right there is a difference between the size of a muscle and the strength of a muscle um, oh, is the texture map done? Okay. Texture map is done. Um, and look at that. So much better. Uh, if you bring a bodybuilder to your zombie apocalypse party, they are going to get weak and flabby so fast. And they are not going to be able to contribute much. I appreciate Terry Crews for all he's done. And he's a, a powerful voice in the community. But he is not my pick for zombie apocalypse, friend. Sorry. We are here is the color map. So then to save this map, you can click on image and you can click on save as. And I'm going to save this in the same folder with my other metallic map. But instead of calling it dirty metal metallic, I want to rename this to dirty metal color. And then again, I'll just save it as a JPEG image and I can click on save as. All right, so it is now time to bake the roughness map. So to bake the I don't have like roughness or anything like that. How about Sylvester Stallone? So now we need to add in all the image textures. Now nah. you can manually add nah, them all in and on. plug them all up, but there is actually a feature of the Node Wrangler add-on which will add in all the textures for us. So with the principled shader selected and with the Node Wrangler add-on turned on, I can press Control Shift T. And when you do that, Blender's file browser will come up and then we can just select all the image textures. So just go into the folder where you have all the image textures and I'm just going to click and drag and select all of the image textures. So we have the normal, the roughness, the color, and the metallic. And it is really important that these textures have those in the names because the principled shader is actually going to look at the names and it's going to use the names in the image textures to properly set up the material. So I can now just click on principled texture set. Up. And you can see that Blender has automatically set up all the texture maps for us. So it's added these mapping nodes right here and it's using the UVs and that's just telling the material that it's going to use the UV mapping. And then that is being plugged into all the textures. Holy and shit. then also something to It kind of worked. We don't have our uh, random things anymore. We're using a UV map. Oh my god. So now we have the glass image. And it works. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Okay. So now export. FBX, yeah, library.fbx. Okay, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> if YouTubers count as celebrities, I get all the HEMA YouTubers. HEMA.
Ima. Ima. Ima martial arts. Historical European martial arts. Ah. Yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> um, it said famous person. I think I think you two tubers are famous people. Am I a famous person? No. But listen. We do what we can. Import an FBX. Import that library. <gasps> Look at the book textures. Oh my God, they were baked. All right, I don't think this. Um, we're on the wrong thing. I think this material didn't quite work. Well, it did. It did work. It did work. Um, okay, yes, none of my folders came along. So what we what we want to do is we just want to take all of these objects. So many objects. Unselect. No. Unselect guy skeleton. And then we want to put these, move them to a new collection and just call it library. Oh my God, so many cubes. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> Looking slightly better. So now we can take our character guy. Select these. Bring him out, bring him out. He's so small. Make him a little bit bigger. Pull him down under the scene. And there you have it. There you have it. The only thing that's missing, the only thing that didn't work is the transparency on the glass. And I... God, I don't remember how to do that. It's the normal. What?
Gotta look this one up again. Thank you, Texture Baker guy. You saved my books, but now I need to look up uh, Blender Transparent Material. Oh, did we? Okay, we're still in EV. We're still in EV. Uh huh. In the engine parameters, screen space reflections. Refraction. Select the object to make transparent. Go to material. So then go to the material properties. Scroll until we reach green space refraction. Set a non-zero value for refraction depth. Okay. What is all this? My God. I don't know. Let's not touch that. One step at a time. So we're in EV. Screen space uh, reflections. Activate the refraction checkbox. Go to material configuration and surface. Don't use the nodes. Just get rid of all that. Near to your interface, scroll down until we reach settings. Activate screen space for fraction. Non zero value. Oh, roughness. Okay, uh, here's what I need to do. I just need to delete the glass material. Yeah, get rid of all the glass material. 
We just need to start over. Okay. So, new material, we call it glass. Uh huh. Scroll down, screen space refraction, non zero value. Transmission up. There we go. Yeah, there was something something weird going on. And then we can change the roughness. So now we use the same. Ah, uh, is it? Okay, whoop. Get out of here. Where's my new material, my new glass material? Glass. Non zero value. Transmission. All the way up. Roughness. Down. Transmission not all the way up. Transmission very high. Just high enough that we can tell there's there's glass. Okay. Give me my glass material. Boom. Boom. Is that really how it looks? Um, one second. <laughs> Needs to be posted. Pictures, important stuff. Oh, did some of the books not make the trip? Oh, shit. Wait, if that's true... No, I have no idea. Okay, well, uh, you know, uh, fine. It's fine. We're fine. It's fine. Look, we have a modeled guy in the in the scene that we want him to be in. That's that's all we really wanted, isn't it? Okay. So now what we can do is we can select 
R. Skelly, Skellington, and go into pose mode. I don't know, make one second. Go into object mode, select everything, just up a bit. Now we're now now we have the uh the grid is in the floor now. That's the important part. All right. Back to pose mode. Okay. So Let's see if we can get this guy to sit in the chair, right? Oh my God, the, the armature is doing amazing work. Make sure these are back behind him. Yeah. Ooh, it's sixty-one percent of my giant music box project. Be nice. Uh, can we like I thought you were. I thought you were done working, but all good. Keep going. Oh God. His eyes aren't paired to his head properly. Well, I wonder, Isaac. What's one thing you do? For a self promo across platforms, like what's the technique I should keep in mind? Ooh. Um, hmm. I guess one of the one of the things that I've noticed is that um uh, You kind of want your stealth promo to be content in itself. You know what I'm saying? Can we rotate this on the... Yes, he hunches. You want your self promo to kind of be content in itself. Like... I, I, I make goofy little pictures on my self on my promotional tweets and stuff like that. And even if nobody clicks on the link, they see the picture and they think, Hey, this, this Isaac guy, he's, uh, he's all right. What do we want to do with this? We want to, Yeah. 
Makes sense. It's like me telling a story and posting a doodle to match it. Yeah. Even if no one reads the story, they will at least look at the doodle. Carefully posing our, our fellow, our gentleman. Now, how do I bend, bend the elbows? Rotate here. Uh, I can bend the He's not bending the elbows. Why is he not bending the elbows? I wonder. Hmm. Why won't you bend? I rotate you, but that's not what I want. Grabbing this doesn't do anything either. I'm also trying to redesign Ray too. I feel like it could make him look better, especially in 2D. 2D definitely gives you more control over the style. There, there are, there's a reason why I'm using the same artist that did that drew this 2D model for a 3D model because I think my 2D model has particularly interesting coloring and not quite anime style. And uh yeah, if I just went with like a generic Vroid model, it would look very anime. But that's not necessarily what I want. How do I do this? Do I need to rotate on a different axis? Okay, definitely not scaling. Is it time to go back to Joey Carly now? Oh, Joey Carly now. 
He made a blender rigging for beginners video just a month ago. All right, bring up the tutorial. So now we have our character successfully rigged. Turn on. And instead of with automatic weights, we're going to choose bone. Bone more turn bones to see what leg painting is another thing like that. Let's, as you can see, when we move the I'll also fix that with weight painting. Another thing that we could fix is you can see when we move the arm, the collar right here is moving like that. Let's reset this and uh, talk a little more about weight painting. To do that, go back into object mode up here. Um, you can character a little better. And I'm just going to explain a few posing tips for you. So you just want to select your armature and go into pose mode. So the first posing tip I would like to talk about is uh, good for things like fingers. So if you select all of the bones in one finger uh, and you want to make them curl like they're curling into a fist, it's a lot easier if you switch to uh, individual origins for the pivot point. And I just got there by hitting uh, period, but you can also do that up here, I believe. And now Where when I rotate that on the local X axis with R and then X twice, you can see it will kind of curl like that. Um, and this is useful for making fists really quickly. You can just select all of the bones like that, all of the finger bones right here, and just R, X twice, and just curl your hand like that. My and that away. seems to only work if you're in individual origins. You could also uh, do this for the spine or things like that too. Another thing is that if you have all of your bones named correctly, like we did, where they have the dot L and the dot R, it will allow you to flip a pose. So I'll just go through and pose my character in like an asymmetrical way. To flip the pose, you can just uh, hit A to select everything, control C. Wait, what are these bones? Oh my god, I didn't grab all the bones when I moved him. I bet that means there's more bones hidden somewhere. Okay. We just have to go back a bit. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Now, why are those bones not part of... They are, so... I guess and also this spine bone right here which is the top of the bone chain for all of our de deforming bones so we can select that too and then select the root last control p and keep offset and this is helpful for if you want to rotate the entire body or if you want to make your character jump things like that so next what I'm going to do is set up the IK constraints. So to do that, you want to go into pose mode like that. So one way to set this up is by selecting the first in your IK chain. In this case, it would be our calf. And you can go over here to bone constraint properties and add in a inverse kinematics constraint right here. And then you're going to have to choose the target. Okay, okay. Where did my where did my elbow target bones go? These two bones are the ones that are being affected. If I change this to one, it will only be this single bone right here, and it'll p pretty much just point towards our IK controller like that. You could, if you wanted to, set it higher, um, and then it will try to control this bone right here. You can see when we do that. It doesn't really work the way we want it to. Unless you have more than two bones in your leg, I recommend just setting this to two. So we can do the same thing for our arm now. So you can just select the IK controller and then the forearm right here. Hit Shift-I. 
And so you can see when we move it now, it's going to move a lot more than we want. So you can set the chain to two like that. So it's only moving these two bones right here. So now I am going to move this up like that. You can see by default, it's So we can do the same thing for Object Guy Skeleton. Yes. This is his left arm, IK arm L. Full target. Bone. Target. Arm L. Uh, actually, what the fuck? So one way to set this up is by selecting the first in your IK chain. In this case, it would be our calf. And you can go over here to bone constraint properties and add in a inverse kinematics constraint right here. And then you're going to have to choose the target, which would be our IK, and the pole target, which would be the target. But instead of doing that, I'm going to show you a different way, which is a little quicker. Basically, you select your IK controller, and then you select the first in the chain, which is the calf, and then you hit shift I. And that's the shortcut to add an IK constraint. And when you do that, it'll automatically put in that IK controller bone right here. And then you just have to select the pole target, which would be armature. And then you can just type in target uh, and choose leg right there. And if we try to move this IK controller bone, it's, you know, <laughs> this will happen. Uh, and the reason that is, is because when you select that calf bone, the yellow one, um, you can see right here our chain length is set to zero. And when we change that to a different number, like one or two, now our skeleton will look more normal. Uh, and you can see the foot now is pointing a different direction. And that is oh, because of the target bone right here. So we have to change the pole angle right here to, until it's pointing at our target bone for the knee. So we can just rotate this right here until it's pointing like that. Could just be set to 90, I guess. And so the way you can think about chain length is how many bones you want to be affected. So you can see when I move this, um, two bones, these two bones are the ones that are being affected. If I change this to one, it will only be this single bone right here. And it'll p pretty much just point towards our IK controller like that. You could, if you wanted to, set it higher, um, and then it will try to control this bone right here. You can see when we do that, it doesn't really work the way we want it to. Unless you have more than two bones in your leg, I recommend just setting this to two. So we can do the same thing for our arm now. So you can just select the IK controller and then the forearm right here, hit shift I. And so you can see when we move it now, it's going to move a lot more than we want. So you can set the chain to two like that. So it's only moving these two bones right okay, here. Now so right. now I am going to move this up like that. You can see by default it's actually um, it's bending in the right direction, but I want to be able to um, move this and have that control where the elbow is pointing. So I'm going to select this bone again, pull target, armature, type in target, arm right there. And again, we're going to have to rotate this. So I think that should be negative 90. And now when we move this, the elbow will point at it. So I just broke the rig a little to explain a common problem that you might run into where uh, when you actually rotate this to be pointing towards your target, your hand might be backwards. What you're going to want to do is just go into edit mode and just take your elbow and make it so that it's pointing very slightly towards your target like that. And basically this is just a situation where if, you're, um, if your bones are pointing this way, uh, it's not really going to act properly when you try to set up the target. 
So you just want to make sure there is a slight bend in the natural direction that you want. It doesn't have to be a lot. So now when we go back in here and change the pull angle once again to negative 90, you can see that the hand is in the correct direction. And if you move your bones and you want to reset them, you can just uh, hit A to select everything, and then Alt-G to clear the pose, Alt-R to clear rotation, and Alt-S to clear the scale, okay? And it'll just go back to normal. I like to be able to um, select this foot, and when I rotate that, I like the knee to uh, point in the direction of the foot. So an easy way to do that is to go into edit mode, select the target bone right here for the leg, and then select the foot and parent it uh, with keep offset like that. Now back in pose mode, you can see when I rotate this, uh, first of all, it's not working the way we want, okay? And the reason for that is because the foot bone is inheriting the rotation of its parent. <clears throat> Yo, Isaac, I wonder, what's a vibe you get from me? Hmm. You know, I know you, I know generally you try to go for like the chaotic cursed energy vibe, but honestly, the vibe I get from you is hardworking. Like you've got so many projects and stuff that you're working on and you're always posting new, new stuff. Like it's, it's one of the reasons why I, I really value your contributions to the uh, Discord and chat and all that sort of stuff because you've got so many things you're working on and they're all very unique and cool. That's the vibe I get. That's the impression that I get. So let's select. Let's select these bones, but not this bone. Let's rotate them around. We also do the control plus thing. Or is it shift plus? No. Alt plus? No. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how to do the thing where you increase the uh, amount of uh, things you've selected. All right. Well, we've got a good angle here. Let's just select these bones, not you, not you. I see, very interesting. Well, what did you expect, Ray? You're a very, very busy person. For a second, I thought that thing on the mouth was Kermit's hand. I am the Kermit, I am the God hand, I am the hand of and the hand of, of time, the hand of Kermit. He looks kind of buff because of the, so does that mean this needs to be rotated? The deforming is so off there. Personally curious on different perspectives. Well, I would say 
that if you want different perspectives. Oh, thank you for the hydrate, Cardinal. <clears throat> if you want different perspectives, it's good to ask around for people. Um, but you have to remember that everybody is going to view it through the lens of their own kind of slice of experience with you. Like, I see you post all this stuff. I'm on your Discord. You're on my Discord. I see all the posts. I see all the stuff. You talk to me. You tell me about everything you're doing. So, of course, I'm going to see you as hardworking because it feels like you're doing so much to me. On the other hand, uh, you know, somebody who only sees the chaotic energy posts might talk about more like the chaotic energy. How goes it? Crundle, I've learned so much today. I baked textured. I baked the texture, Crundle. I baked it. And now the books, the books have a texture. Oh, I totally didn't bake the music textured. Oh, well. We can probably just redo that one, huh? You got to do the cooking by the book. You know you can't be lazy. Featuring Little John. What? <laughs> oh, such a gem of the internet that that uh, thing is. Is there a place we can put this? Or this? All right, now I do. I should have some. Yeah, I should have some IK constraints on these, right? Copy location, copy rotation. Ah, no, this is the one we want. All right, so now let me, let me go back to, so, so let me, let me just, let me just look at this. We are in the timeline, right? No, but we need to be in the video sequencer. Yeah. Let me just make sure that I did this right. Okay, yes. Yes. So we need to add sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long is the sound? Quite long. Two minutes long. All right, time to turn off the Brandenburg Concertos for a second. Um, go back to the timeline. Wait. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's only 10 seconds. So that means 25 frames per second. And if this is uh, two minutes and four seconds and one frame, I'll just say two minutes and four seconds. So that is 124 seconds, right? 124 times 25 is 3,100 frames. So that means if we go back to the timeline, our ending needs to be 3,100. It's a lot of frames. But now we fit the entire song here. So now what we can do is pull up the, the lyrics of this song that I made a while back and grab, grab this boy. Uh, we need the dope sheet. We're all stars now in the dope sheet. Now we need the timeline. And you go all the way back to the beginning. So this is this is something I learned from from a video. I'm hoping it works. Let's all hope together. Are you ready to hope with me? Wrong one. Grab this, rotate on the X. Hope's hard. Thank you so much. Thank you for your hope. Okay. So we turn on auto keyframes and let's play. Now we're just gonna listen to the, the song. You're hopelessly amplified. No, 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 I realize I'm a millennial and my book is limited. Gotta find it, man. Gotta find it. You hopelessly amplified influential consequential things you want to be exploded by the fun that you thought you were having a rational distraction negligence the devil and development malevolent maintenance and patience make the excesses irrelevant your soul is null and voided the grind is never ending when you're being exploited Swiss cheese starting to get moldy you full of okay let's now hide the skeleton and watch this it's been a while since I've been listening to this song. Will this work? I think it works. You're hopelessly amplified. Influential, consequential things you want to be. Exploded by the fun that you thought you were having. Oh my god, it's a working. Distraction. However, uh, it's kind of bad. So let's try again. Just uh, delete keyframes. Thank you. This is what I wanted to do. This is all I wanted to do. Everything I ever wanted. So I'm not very good. Why does he look dead inside? Yes. 
As Gen Z's hope is just a dream. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Ooh, ee, ooh. And if heard a paradise, it says it's up above. Do 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 you want another secret to finding the hope? Do you want to know the secret, the Isaac Anzu classified secret to, to having hope in your life? Do you want to know it? I'm stuck with a cold lately. I'm becoming a snot machine. <laughs> I uh, completely understand that feeling. Although I have to say the pollen pollen here in Berlin is not too not too bad this time of of uh this time of year. So my my allergies have not been too bad. Pollen don't exist here. the city it's tree or no tree life could be a dream of love this is a good angle to to do the recording on okay tell me tell me chimera ceo extraordinaire uh, the answer to having hope is to limit your perspective to the areas that you and your friends, your friend circle, your, your group, your, your tribe can influence. So if you start thinking about politics or climate change or stuff like that, those are big things and you can't influence them. But there are groups that you can join to help influence them. If you can find a group that is helping to influence them, you can feel better about it. You can have hope. You just have to, you know, get outside and, and uh, interact with people and, and find, find, find a group of people, like-minded individuals that you can contribute to in a meaningful way. So my hope is shit post on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's very hopeful. <laughs> uh, I don't think that that will provide you a lot of hope. All right, shall we try to do a recording? Let's do it. Make sure this is selected. Rotate on the X. Further out. You're hopelessly influenced. Influential, consequential things you want to be. Exploited by the fun that you thought you were having. A rational distraction. Negligence, the devil, and development, malevolent. Maintenance and patience make the excesses irrelevant. Your soul is null and voided. The grind is never ending when you're being exploited. Swiss cheese starting to get moldy. You full of holes, you think that you're holy. Annihilation days, hell of future drawing near. If you make it effortless, the things you love will disappear. You're addicted to the movement of the progress bar. The scroll bar, the drink bar. Decaying from the inside. Never let them down, you gotta bury your pride. Serving satisfaction. Oh, 
perfection. We seek an agency for the promise of affection. Conception of the pleasure doesn't happen in a vacuum. Emotional attention they don't teach you in a classroom. Distrust till they all lie. Always being followed. Always being watched. Too many intermissions. Too many missions to each wrist. Finish it in a year. To ask for the intent. Everyone's a brand, and no one needs a friend. The man owns the world stage. Do what they want to see if they got face. Numbers and stars keep you preoccupied. Your hour rate monopolized. Decay from the inside. Never let them down, you gotta bury your pride. Serving satisfaction. Push that love on till it breaks. All right, let's turn off the skeleton and watch the performance, shall we? Should those either give hope or rage? Either way, it's stimulation. Well, but that's the thing. Stimulation is not contribution. There's emotions and there's action. You're hopelessly influential. Influential, consequential things you want to be. Exploded by the fun that you thought you were having. A rational distraction. Negligence, the devil, and development, malevolent. Maintenance and patience make the excesses irrelevant. Your soul is null and voided. The grind is never ending when you're being exploited. Swiss cheese, starting to get moldy. You're full of holes, you think that you're holy. Annihilation days, hell of future drawing near. If you make it effortless, the things you love will disappear. You're addicted to the movement of the progress bar. The scroll bar, the drink bar. Decay from the inside. Never let them down, you gotta bury your That's pride. That's animation. Serving satisfaction. Push that love on till it breaks. We're seeking agency for the promise of affection. Conception of the pleasure doesn't happen in a vacuum. Emotional attention they don't teach you in a classroom. Distrust till they all lie. Always being followed. Always being watched. Too many intermissions. Too many missions to get to risk. Finish it in a year. To ask for the intent. Everyone's a brand and no one needs a friend. The man owns the world stage. Do what they want to see a big out face. Numbers and stars keep you preoccupied. Your outright monopolized. Decay from the inside. Never let them down, you gotta bury your pride. Serving satisfaction. Push that love on till it breaks. So one thing I one thing I heard, uh, which can be useful. Uh, let's turn the skeleton back on here. Um, stop. We zoom in here. Uh, select all. Well, let's start by moving this one. Uh, we zoom in here. We select all, and then just. Scooch it a couple frames forward, and then it'll look slightly better. You're hopelessly influential, influential consequential things you want to be. It's yes. by the. All right. So. Now that we have the mouth movements done. It's kind of time to to make a uh, what you call it. Oh God, I'm gonna have to look up the flipping Joey Carlino. <laughs> Save me. Uh, where's your where's your where's your fr beginner friendly blender vids playlists? Uh. Camera tips. Yes. So. So essentially, we want to pose this guy how we want him in 
the uh, first shot of the the thing, right? So let's just hunch him all the way forward, head down. What? Oh, I accidentally had this selected as well. Just leading those doesn't change. Yeah, we've still got our jaw thing. Yeah, deleting those doesn't change a thing. Don't change a thing. Grab this. Move it down here. Isaac, in Minecraft, I have a friend who wants me to PvP another friend as a reward for my clay. As a reward for your clay? Like, you gave them clay, and then now they want you to PvP? I don't understand. Is that a, is that a sufficient reward? What are they trying to pull? What are they trying to do here? What are they trying to pull? <laughs> oh, he looks so sad. So I think this is this is actually good. This is actually good. Um, a good first pose. So then, and we have our area lights. Uh, there is a light in here, isn't there? Yeah, there's a point light in here. In other words, I'm bribed to judge the hunt, hunt the judge of our Minecraft. Sometimes I worry. Sometimes I worry. What 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 shenanigans are these? What what shenaniganry is this? Um lighting. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Camera tips. In this one, I'll be talking about some camera tricks that might help you control your camera a little more easily. Here's a summary of what we'll talk about. Each topic will have its own timestamp, so you can skip around if you want to do that. First, we'll look at camera display options like overlays, focal length, and shifting. Then we'll talk about creating What I want is I like these area lights. I'm wondering why the Yeah, those are actually cool. Cool render pass options. <laughs> mist. We love the mist option. So why is 
Why is the background so bright? I would like the background to be black. Um, under preferences, see about snap caps. No, 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 no. Uh, what do we want? We want indoor light. Dark indoor light. Uh huh. Also, why is my um, point light not on? Point lights, light settings. Uh, our radius is too small. There we go. Wait, does that mean my other, my area lights were also fucked up? Now they all have radiuses. Why? Oh, shit. They were not even set to area. They were set to points. Here's the... Here's the um, Do I just need to uh, make a shift A, add a plane, scale the fuck up, uh, rotate it on the X90, um, scooch back, uh, set the material to pure black. Like matte black. Yeah, I think that's what I have to do. I need I need to just uh get the proper proper back black background for this. Uh so now we have our humongo black plane and we want to duplicate it. Right? Yeah, we want it outside here. So shift D, duplicate it on the Y, move there. Amen to the pleasantries. Um, there we go. Select again, duplicate it here and this time rotate it 90 degrees on the X, uh, create a little underfloor, duplicate it, create a little ceiling, 
uh, maybe move the ceiling up so we have plenty of room to uh, explore. Then duplicate it, rotate it on the Y 90 degrees. Perfect. And then move it on the X a little bit over. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Is that far enough over? Uh, yeah, probably. Then duplicate it on the X and give us another wall. So now if we turn off the lights, Now we have these black voids to work in. But why is this one? Why does this one look different? Why does the bottom one look different? Real question. Amen to the pleasantry. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Anyway, we've got we've got some stuff now. You're hopelessly influential. Influential consequential things you take agency for the promise of affection. Conception of the pleasure doesn't happen in a vacuum. Emotional attention they don't teach you in a classroom. That's right. He's like. He's just singing into the. Uh, he's just singing into the uh, into the desk. All right. Let's let's add a camera. I'm going to have to watch this goddamn camera tutorial again. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, obviously lock the camera to view. And then let's set up our, our view. So uh, then what we can do is we can um, make a keyframe here, which I believe we do with Insert keyframe location. Yep. And then we figure out where we want to stop the camera motion. Or 
right about there. And so then we want to uh, have the camera kind of on him here. Insert location keyframe. So now let's watch. The slow zoom. The slow zoom is good intro. Uh, so, all right, undo. You can see it. You can see our little camera guy. You're hopelessly amplified. So eventually we'll be able to switch cameras. Uh, however, I believe it's in the video compositor. But what we can also do is right here near the end of this move. Right about there. We can turn on the skeleton. In impose mode, yep. Impose mode, we want to, I mean, let's go back a few frames. And insert a rotation. Uh, keyframe, and then right at damn it. Why, do I, why would I ever need like negative a thousands? I don't need negative a thousands. Like right, right there, or maybe we make it a little snappier, like here. We rotate the head on the X. He looks up from the desk, essentially. And let's insert a rotation keyframe there. Yeah. So now let's look through the camera lens. Isn't that cool? <laughs> the things you want to be exploited by the fun that you thought you were having. A rational distraction. And of course, then he starts singing, uh, which is so cool. So cool. Oh.
We had to go through so many steps to get to this point. So many steps. Why? Why? Why does it have to be like this? And by the way, uh, we are at 450 frames of 3,000. <laughs> so not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. You did well. I thank you. Um, there we go. It's so hard to get this far. It's respectful. It is what it is. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're hopelessly influential, consequential. What if that was just the entire music video? It's him staring at the camera. <laughs> it's the entire music video. Um. Let's select the camera because 478. Is that where our keyframe is? No. Is it 473? Let's lock the camera and just up it a little bit, yeah. And then unlock the camera. It didn't. It didn't change. Oh, because I didn't have the. Uh, I didn't have. I didn't make a actual thing. Okay, lock the camera. Frame frame his his face a little bit better. So I think this is this is the key. We want to do the posing before the camera work because the camera has to frame the the guy, right? So now now Still didn't do it. How about that? There we go. You know, we had some ups and downs, but the important thing is that we you got through it. Right. Things you we got through it together. 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 Also, I'm still of the opinion that Jack Black would not be a good choice for zombie apocalypse. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. I know he's very funny. He would keep you entertained. But I have more. I have more pressing matters in the zombie apocalypse. Ugh, who knew that all I had to do was ugh, bake my textures and then import my library, even though I didn't get the entire library. I missed some books, and then start posing, start going, animated music video. We've got 473 frames of music video all ready, 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 ready to go. How about that? Back to the basics indeed. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry, Unreal Engine. Just uh, on a beat. Unreal Engine wasn't doing it for me in the end. 
it's tough to learn a whole new system, you know. I can just try animating in Blender. It'll give it that janky look. And you know we love the janky leg. <laughs> Do the janky leg. All right, it's uh, Friday night and the feeling's right. I think it's time for a raid, shall we? Shall we raid? Where are we dropping? Mm. Oh, you know, it's probably been a while since we rated ten lock homes. Yep. She's playing Final Fantasy XIV. I know there are some fellow Final Fantasy enjoyers in the audience. So, uh, let's go raid. All right. Start raid. And throw that raid message up. Throw that raid message up in chat. To everyone who stuck around through this long and arduous stream. Thank you. I'll turn the I'll turn the Brandenburg Concerto back on now. If you're still in chat, grab that raid message. Let's go. Say hi to Penlock Holmes. Even though she might be um, ending soon. That's okay. We'll raid anyway. My name is Isaac Anzu. Thank you so much for joining me in this little art excursion. I would like to make this a music video that actually like happens. So we'll keep going on it next week. Until then, good night, sleep tight, and don't let the bed bugs bite. Uh, the harpsichord's really going crazy in the background. Anyway, farewell. Thank <laughs> you.